Hi, I'm Heidi Bao, Director of Alumni Relations at Mid-Pacific. As an alumna, I enjoy seeing alums come back to campus, whether it's to bring their children who are students here, or if they simply want to take a trip down memory lane. Normally, we'd be meeting here at our largest alumni gathering in the summer, which brings together over 400 alumni from different generations. This event connects alumni from all over the world and gives us a chance to honor notable individuals for their continued support of the school. This year, we're doing something a little different. I wanted to bring the school to you. I'll introduce you to some people along the way, and hopefully this will bring back some memories of your time on campus. Welcome back. As alumni, sometimes we can't help but stop and reminisce about our time here. Floyd Takeuchi is here with me from the honored 50th reunion class of 1971 to talk a little bit about this special class and to share a few of their memories leading up to this monumental year. Welcome Floyd, back to campus. Thanks, it's been a long time. <laughs> We're gonna just take a tour. Okay. Take that's you great. down memory lane and show you around campus as it is today. And then we can go over some memories that okay. you've had here. And our tennis courts, you were asking me about this. I did. Yeah. <laughs> our tennis coach in those days was the uh, chaplain. Oh. Reverend Chong, Kim On Chong. Oh, yes. Who was a really good chaplain and an okay kid tennis coach, <laughs> but, but a good guy. <laughs> he always prayed for us before we, we went. Oh, did he? Sometimes it worked. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Do you remember the rock? Oh yes. And is there is there still a pond next to it? There's a pond. We should go yeah. by the pond. Everyone bit. remembers the pond, right? Yeah. The unlucky people got thrown in. <laughs> in our gym, we used to have your dances. And graduation. Oh, graduation was in the gym for yeah. you guys. The class of 71, because the Vietnam, Vietnam War was still on, we didn't know it at graduation, but we did the next year that our class was going to be the last ones uh, who, were, who were, could be drafted. And uh, there were no, no deferments at that, at that, at that point. So uh, I, th I think the memories are, are going to be tied to just uh, pivotal events in our lives and, and in the country's life at that time. So you're celebrating your 50th, huh? That's what they tell us. It doesn't feel like it <laughs> on most days. <laughs> what an iconic, you know, time for you. It's monumental. The class of 71, when we do get together, it's as if uh, there's been no, no time has passed. There, there's a sense of just falling back into an easy relationship again. And I think they will, they will, th those memories will come back pretty quickly just to be on campus again. I strive to build alumni engagement to ultimately help support our alma mater. As you know, that engagement comes in many forms. It could be in your volunteerism, attendance at events, and also philanthropic support. Every year, I work with the class giving reps from each reunion class on setting participation and giving goals, and I offer support in any way possible. I am truly proud of this honored class of 1971 for raising over $71,000, most of which will go toward the Class of 1971 Endowment Fund. Thank you to the class of 71 for your effort and continued support of this school. You are truly making a difference in the lives of our students. Wow, so most of these are new buildings. Yeah, but you re okay, so this is Damon Library right here. This is the library, you right? remember yeah. it to be, yeah, Damon Library. Oh, I think it's, uh, it's well worth coming back. It's pretty exciting to see the, the changes and how big the school has become and and just see the, the, the progress that has been made in the years since we were here. This is the Weinberg Technology Plaza, which was built in 2004. Back in the day, I remember this area being just a hillside where on a rainy day, you'd tread very carefully so as not to slip and slide down this hill. Fast forward to today, built with the contribution and support of many people, this amazing facility provides generations of young people with opportunities to utilize state-of-the-art technology as tools for learning. We chatted with a longtime teacher, Dr. Mark Hines, about the heart and vision of this facility. 
We wanted to build a facility that would both reinforce and capture what we understood were the best ideas about how learning happens. And so the spaces you see here, when you walk through them, you'll notice some really significant things that are different than traditional classrooms. They're very wide and open spaces. There's lots of opportunities for students to work together in teams. We want to provide students a wide variety of resources and tools in order to expand their thinking. We do things with artificial intelligence and virtual reality and robotics in ways that we couldn't have done 20 years ago. We know we're preparing students for a very different kind of world. And so this kind of open structure that provides opportunity is the best way to help them be ready for a world that's a very dynamic one for them to step into. One of the big reasons that my love and respect for the school has grown over the years is their focus on student learning for the future, right? So it's, we're not stuck in that traditional mode of education where it's textbook, it's lecture based. They're really looking forward to see what is it that our students are gonna need? How can we help them develop to meet that need of the next generation of jobs or career paths or whatever it may be? And so it's very progressive, it's very innovative, and I love that. The skills that I learned, like communication skills, leadership skills, and just like becoming more involved in my school community, it helped me in college too. I feel like Midpack challenges in many like different angles, which is really good. It taught me how to be like a critical thinker when it comes to situations like thinking a lot outside of the box. For me, I work in higher education, so I see graduates from Mid Pacific come, and I'm always impressed with Mid Pacific graduates because they always work well in groups, they always work well in teams, they're always good people. Wood Hall is our newest building on campus, built in 2015. The person who was key to starting this project many years ago is Mr. Michael B. Wood, who is this year's Wa'ahila Award honoree. This award is given by the MPIAA to an individual who has excelled in his or her field of endeavor and has attained a level of prominence which exceeds his or her service to Mid-Pacific, yet reflects favorably on Mid-Pacific Institute. Mr. Wood has been in the real estate development industry for over 30 years. As a local business owner, Mr. Wood has always had a heart to give back to his community. Actually, I grew up in Oakland, California, uh, in a very dysfunctional family. That has really kind of influenced my whole life. I became aware of Family Programs Hawaii, and Family Programs Hawaii deals with abused and neglected kids and that was close to my heart, so I got involved with that organization. And I saw this problem with these abused and neglected kids, and there was no, no place for them. And so I talked to my family, and we decided we are gonna build a, a transition home for these children. Ho'omolo ono kamali'i, that, that's the transition home, and 1,500 kids have gone through that program, and we're into our 12th year. Twelve years ago, Mr. Wood began serving on the Mid-Pacific Institute Board of Trustees. He has always been an advocate for the youth in the community and our students here at Mid-Pacific. In 2018, Mr. Wood had an opportunity to visit the completed building and experience a day in the life of a sixth grade student. Well, as you probably noticed, when I first walked in the first room, I didn't say anything. I was just kind of overwhelmed about God, look at this, this is incredible. What a great, what a great group of kids, for one, and two, what a great building. We're here at Wood Hall, a building that is the first of its kind here at Mid-Pacific. So as you know, in every building, uh, hallways take up 20% of the buildings. Here in Wood Hall, we maximize this space. So we could have a large group presentation in a larger room here, or we can break it up and have individual classrooms. All of the furniture is here on wheels to push aside or come together depending on your students' needs. The next place I'd like to take you to is called the Da Vinci Studio. A lot of the science, a lot of the art projects, um, things that require a mess will happen in this room. 
when it was announced by, by Paul Turnbull that there's a 10 or 20 year, $100 million renovation plan to be able to upgrade with, and especially with the middle school. I just thought it was the natural thing to do to step up and make the first large commitment. And the family decided that we would provide some scholarships. And so we, I don't I guess we're in our sixth or seventh year. And that's been, I think, very meaningful to, to us and I think to the school as well. We have kids that have the opportunity to, to improve, improve themselves and prepare themselves to go on to college or, or a better life. And I can't think of where I'd rather be where I can help some of that happen. I'll say thank you for having this beautiful building for us. Thank, thank you. you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Michael Wood, for your continued dedication and support. Normally during our annual alumni paina, we are supported by many loyal OWL families that provide food and services to our event. But because we are virtual this year, we want to take the time to recognize them for all that they have done for us over the years. I encourage you to support these local businesses as well. Out of the thousands of students who spent their time on campus, there is one in particular who called this place home growing up. I had a chance to meet up with alumnus Bill Wheeler and talk about his childhood here on campus. I grew up on campus, right? So my dad was a teacher here. So I lived in 11 different places I counted on campus. I was in plays when I was four years old as props uh, because they needed a little kid to, to perform in the play. So little Billy Wheeler can do it, right? When I go to alumni functions, a lot of the alums come up and they say that they changed my diaper when, they, when I was a kid. And this was our backyard. Back then it was 34 acres. So I learned how to ride a bike on these hills and skateboard. I learned how to shoot baskets in the gym and swim in the pool. All these things growing up. Um, but it was a good time back then. Back in February of 2020, we held an event on campus honoring two special Mid-Pacific Institute alums who have deeply influenced the Mid-Pacific Ohana. This road right here is one that many of you have driven and walked on during your time here. The school named this iconic road that runs through campus after James Komitani, class of 1957, who has served as a trustee for many years and has supported our school in countless ways. This well-traveled road, Komitani Way, will be a constant reminder of Jim's wonderful heart for this school. Going up Komitani Way, we're led to Upper Campus and into the courtyard fronting Kauai Hau. One of the busiest places on campus, this area was dedicated to and named after Dorothy Hanamaika'i Kroll, class of 1955, fondly known as Auntie Dottie or Mrs. Kroll. This iconic gathering space honors her legacy as a longtime admissions director and ambassador who knows everyone's name. Jim Komitani and Dottie Kroll will forever be a part of our beautiful history and legacy we have here at Mid-Pacific. As alumni, the one structure that we all know well and remember is this historic building behind me. Considered one of the oldest buildings in Hawaii, Kauai Hao was built to house Kauai Hao Seminary, which eventually merged with Mills Institute in 1908. For over a hundred years, many have walked its halls and stood on its steps. An interesting fact, many alumni, including our very own Auntie Dottie, used to live here when it used to be a girls' dormitory back in the day. Today, the building houses our Mid-Pacific School of the Arts Performing Arts Program which includes band, orchestra, dance, and theater, as well as our world languages and language arts classes. Another person who has played a huge part in the growth of the arts, in particular the band program, is Mr. Ni'i, who began as a teacher here over 40 years ago. I started in 1976. Yes, it was a long time ago. So do you still keep in touch with alums? 
Yes, I do. So there's, you know, you run into them everywhere. I ran into, a, in fact, a, a pharmacist at Safeway. I didn't exactly know who he was, so, you know, he just kind of said, hey, Mr. Nee. So I said, you know, I, and I asked him who he was. And then he said, you know, I'm really sorry for all the trouble I caused you. <laughs> but, you know, I said, you know, I'm just glad that, you know, look at you now, right? So you're a pharmacist and you're helping people and everything else. So it, it's always nice to, you know, to kind of reminisce with the alumni. So here we are on the Mid-Pacific Baseball Field. We're here to just show you around and uh, we can take a peek into Coach Dunmore Maru's world. He's been with Mid-Pacific for over 40 years and uh, he's left quite a legacy here. How long have you been coaching? I've been coaching since 1986. 1986, but yeah. you've been teaching here since? Since 1979. I mean, you know, we. Mid-Pacific wasn't that good when we first got here, and, and we just figured, just try to find a way to um, to get the kids better, and and that's all we did. We just worked hard. And there's your champions, and look at this celebration. Coach Dunn has influenced many of his players here on campus. Out of the hundreds of players that have played for him, you know, many of them come back. Uh, we have several that are coaching with him, and then we have a few that are coaching at the college level and beyond. We even have one alum who is playing for the majors right now, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, class of 2013. Kiner Falefa turns on one, deep out to left, it's gone! Coach Dunn is one of those faculty coaches that he tries to teach you life lessons through that trying to better ourselves, the growth mindset, always trying to do better than uh, what you already are. So here we are in front of the art cottages. We're going to take a peek into a sixth grade art class taught by Ms. Gail Ikeda. She was a former teacher of mine. Many of the alums ask me about her. She's been an inspiration for many of us. I started in 77, and that was when we first started the intermediate school, right? So that was the graduating class of 83. I've been here for 44 years. I remember her as being like very motherly, caring about the, the students and, and, the, and maybe because we were the same height. I don't know, I was like three feet tall. I don't know, maybe we saw eye to eye literally. It was about people and, you know, the craft and the things you're supposed to learn was a part of it, but you were more important. I love Mid-Pacific because it is that kind of community that everyone is very um, close and very caring. Mid-Pac's like that place where you can learn different things and be challenged, at the same time be in a very homey environment where you have a lot of good friends. I feel like it's like a very close-knit community, so it has taught me like, like lessons about family. You can see, you know, we walk by anybody and say hi, and they'll say hi back. You know everyone in your class. You know, we just have really good people. It really is a special place, and I don't know if I can truly put it into words, but I know that I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today without this school. And then, I mean, we have so many alumni that come back to work for Mid-Pacific because for them it was a wonderful experience. It's really neat to be back and to see teachers that we had and I get to teach alongside them. That was like comforting in a way because they're staying here because they love it here. And it, it reassured me like, oh, this is a good place to be. Uh, so I teach middle school social studies, seventh grade. Uh, I've been here, gosh, 15 years or so, so it's been a long time, yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen some of the teachers that I had. Um, I've been, I've worked with them and, uh, you know, seen them retire, and so I feel like the, sort of the older teacher now. I came from seventh grade all the way till I graduated, and uh, the teachers always had time for you, and it's important, right, for the kids to be comfortable and to enjoy school, and, you know, hopefully I can provide that that for them, same thing that I got provided for me. I remember a lot of the memories I have here is 
that I had a relationship with my teachers and that they helped me through a lot of, not hard times, but you know, they, they helped guide me to becoming a man. Uh, you know, teachers like Michelle Miyamoto, Don Muramaru, Auntie Dottie, there was uh, Kumulan Akila. So there are so many teachers that actually cared about me and inspired me to just, hopefully one day I can inspire one of these kids to, to just care about people and um, inspire them to become somebody, anybody. Honestly, I mean, I'm not biased because I came here and I'm working here now, but I can honestly say it's unlike any other school. Every year, we love to honor and celebrate a person within our alumni community. The Alumni of the Year Award is the highest award given by the Mid-Pacific Institute Alumni Association to an alumnus or alumna who has provided outstanding service to the school, displayed a strong sense of support and loyalty, and has dedicated significant effort to the improvement of Mid-Pacific Institute. This year's honoree, Stephen Turuya from the class of 1970, has continually gone above and beyond to encourage and support our Mid-Pacific community. A person who knows Steve very well and was a classmate is Charlie Keyes. Do you remember when you first met? Our relationship was different, you know, because you asked where we met. We met, we came to summer school, but as soon as we sat down in that class, or well, the corner one down there, yeah, what was the subject? Algebra. Algebra, okay, our favorite subject. <laughs> and we've been friends ever since. So. This is also where I met my wife, as juniors. Junior year, one day, someplace around here, he said, I kind of like that one. <laughs> so we set him up, and then somewhere along the line, she dumped him <laughs> and broke his heart. Yes, yes Cynthia, you yes. broke his heart. <laughs> now, the part of the story I don't remember is how you got back together. I think it was after a baseball, uh, basketball game at Roosevelt, where we all had to go back in the bus because we, we rode the school bus. And I think it was there that she may have told me that she'd give me another chance. <laughs> uh, that's what I seem to recollect in our junior year during basketball season. Well, when she sees this, she can come in. Yeah, yeah, she might have a different story. <laughs> One thing a lot of people don't, didn't know about him, that he had this inner drive. It was a kind you go into the room and you just know that's the leader, you know, like a Derek Jeter or a Joe DiMaggio, you know, they, you just know that's the guy. And I think that served him in high school and, and in his career. Steve, yes. describe to us what this school means to you. Oh, it means a lot. Well, he was on the board for how many years? I don't know, more than 10. I think um, I've always uh, advocated Mid-Pacific, knowing more than maybe the casual person would know because as I served on the board and you read about what the school's doing now, you kind of look back with a source of pride in whatever success that they have, whether it's academics, um, in the arts, uh, or in sports. Uh, so that, that's where it comes from, just having a sense of pride in seeing the, uh, the school do well. Thank you, Steve, for your continued support of our alma mater. We all carry so many memories of our campus life. For so many alumni, the dorm life here on campus was one of the main highlights of their Mid-Pacific experience. You know, Mid-Pac started off as a, as a boarding school when we first began. And if you talk to any alum from the era where there was a boarding program, they'll, they'll talk about the dorm first. And they'll talk about it the longest and they'll talk about it with the most passion because that's what Mid-Pac is all about back then. Living in the dorms, uh, that was a big, uh, uh, adjustment for all of us and, and to be 14 and uh, living in a dorm was, was, was quite an adjustment but, uh, but we learned how to make uh, good hospital corner beds and for inspection and things like that. I always stayed here, stayed in the dorm. I had a work scholarship. My scholarship was cleaning the gym so I had the key to the gym. That was like golden. So on weekends I could just go down there open up the gym and with all the, the, the um, Neighbor Island students who didn't go home as well, we'd go down there, swim in a pool, play, shoot basketball. So it was, it was wonderful for me. What I cannot forget 
is he went through a period in his life where he believed washing your game jersey was bad luck. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. that might, yeah. might not mean anything to you guys, but to his roommate. <laughs> the girls would come up to the boys' dorm to visit. They'd come to our room and... <laughs> and he got to tell It was them. our room. <laughs> yeah, it was our room. It was our room. <laughs> it was our room. And he was only doing basketball season. <laughs> Back then, we didn't only know our classmates, but we knew the, the years before and after us because we were all together in the dorm. That family ohana feeling of support and, and being with each other has just perpetuated, even though we no longer have dorms. It was sad, honestly, to, to see the dorms go and the, the, and the buildings get torn down, but the memories are still here. Every year, the, they ask for alumni to volunteer to help decorate the, the graduating stage. We have parents of alums and students who are legacy students and legacy scholars that come out and help. We even have alums from class of 63 and, you know, Lynn Morata and her husband Mel, they come every year. And Lynn, every year she tells me, I need somebody to take over my spot. But when she gets here, she's like, okay, let's grab everyone together. Okay, this is what we're doing. I think it really means a lot to us as alums to be a part of this decorating um, because we were here once. I enjoy the camaraderie that we have with the uh, staff, the students, uh, everyone who comes here, the alumni. And I think it's really important that we give back to the school. They have done so much for not only myself way back when, but also for my kids. This is a huge event for our school and our students. This year especially because they had such a hard year, um, we're so happy that they're able to do this in person. I think that all of these students here, we're going to go so far because we, together as a class, have gone through so much. This ride has been full of unexpected things, but um, that did not stop us from getting where we are today. Mid-Pacific has been a, it's just been such a big support. I'm so happy I went to this school. I wouldn't have it any other way. It is my privilege and honor to certify that the class of 2021 is hereby graduated from Mid-Pacific Institute. May God bless you all. There are a lot of things that have changed about Mid-Pacific over the years. But the thing that's never changed is how important alumni see their experience here as connecting them to this ohana that grows every year as these new students come through and we're connected through that. This is a special place, right? Um, in Manoa Valley, we have, in my opinion, the most beautiful campus that there is. Anybody who went to school here can identify with that. You know, regardless of when you went, it's still the same campus, it's still Manoa Valley. The buildings may have changed, but the culture and the feeling of being here, this place is special. And I think Midpac grads can, can feel that. The notion of um, the school's great and it's even greater and we're working to make it even greater tomorrow than it is today is, you know, they, there should be a sense of pride about that. It's about the journey, not the destination. It was about the memories that we made along the way. It was about the lifelong friendships and the bonds that we created over the past four years of our lives. These are the things that are irreplaceable and unforgettable. These are the intangibles that are gonna stay with us as we move forward into the next chapter of our lives.
Thank you for joining us on this trip down memory lane. For many of us, this campus feels like home, and I hope I was able to bring a little bit of home to you. We truly appreciate your support of our alma mater. Alumni are the backbone of our community, and we value any donation of your time, talent, or treasure. Please visit midpac.edu for information on how to get involved. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you soon.